and then gradually you will gain more and more knowledge. But the thing is that we know that we have to offer Salat. We don't offer Salat. Okay. Yes, we offer Salat, but we also know that we should offer Salat on its first time. We don't offer it. We know that we should recite Dua. We don't recite. We know that we should recite uh, uh, Quran every day. We don't recite. So there are many, many things. Although we have very little knowledge, but whatsoever we have that little knowledge, we don't even give importance to that knowledge as well. We don't practice according to that. So this is the main core issue which we have. Now coming to this point of after this, after these uh, verses in in ziyarat, it's been said. We say, "Ashhadu anna kaka tballaq tum, wa nasahtum wa sabartum fi zatilla." That you have convey, you have convey the knowledge, convey the message to the mass, masses and people. You have advised them, "Wa sabartum fi zatilla." It's not that you advise people once or twice and few times. No, sabartum. That you steadfast, you were firm in that. Sabar over here it means being firm in your belief. Sabartum. To be to steadfast in your belief. So it's not that you have suggested people what is the right path, but in in on with with uh, in uh, with consistency and continuously you advise people. وَسَبَرْتُمْ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ وَكُذِّبْتُمْ وَأُسِيْئَ إِلَيْكُمْ But what happened, then again, just, I skipped a few uh, uh, sentences, then it says, وَأَنَّ تَعَتَكُمْ مَفْرُوضًا Now this is what we are reciting, when we go to, to Ziyara, or we recite Ziyara at our play home, this is what we are saying. Okay, so number one, we are lying, or we are hypocrites, what we are, or we don't really understand these things. We are just, we are, we just reciting these uh, ziyarat, just a, a, just a ritualistic thing. So even if it is ritualistic, it's not going to help us out in this world or hereafter. If hypocritically we are saying something, Again, it's not going to benefit us, rather it's going to hurt us. And third, if you are lying, we know that. And we are lying, again, it's again it's going to be against us. So what we say, وَأَنَّ تَعَتُكُمْ مَفْرُوضًا O Imam, you were the people whose, whose acceptance of their guidance were an obligation that to follow you is not an option. It's an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to ghadir e and when it comes to wilayat amir al Mu'minin, we all say, look, other people, they do not accept amir al Mu'minin as Khalifa to Bila Fasl and the successor after the Holy Prophet. But why we want Ali as a successor of Imam, of uh, the Holy Prophet? Why we want Ali as a successor? Number one, because he was been appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, for what? For what he was been appointed? Or the progeny, his progeny after him was being selected and appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why they been appointed? For one reason. That we believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must seek guidance from these Imams and follow their footsteps as an obligation and not as an option. We have accepted ourselves when we say that we are the followers of Quran, when we say that we are the followers of 
Holy Prophet, when we say we are the followers of Ali wa awlaad Ali, that means we are accepting that we will follow your footsteps. We all offer prayers over here. Okay? If you allow me and you have asked me or requested me that I may lead your prayers and then I am standing over there in mihrab and offering prayers and nobody is following me. So what is the sense of having the Salatul Jama'ah? What is the sense of congregational prayers? Then everyone may uh, offer their own prayers. So why then you are asking me to lead you? There is no sense. There is nothing, nothing making sense. So when we want Ali as our leader, when we want Imam Hassan as our leader, when we want Imam Hussain as our leader, when we want Imam Zainul Abidin as our leader, when we want Imam Muhammad Abakar as our leader, so then it is an obligation on us that we must follow him. And that's what we are saying. That Allah has made obligation. It's not our option. Allah has made obligation on us that we sh must follow these imams who are coming one after another. And whatever you have said is truth. Now this is the core problem. We, we claim this thing. We say this thing. You invited people towards the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but nobody accepted you. You have not been listened. We are talking about only non-Shias. Or we are also including Shias as well. What we are following. Just a few things. Can we do this thing? Pick and choose what we like. What is convenient for us. That is what Imam Khomeini said in one of his speeches. A person you pick and choose from deen, it is an opportunist. It is on, he is, that person is an opportunist. We cannot, Quran says. The person who pick and choose, يُؤْمَنُونَ بِالْبَاذِ وَيَكْفُرُونَ بِالْبَاذِ Quran says, those people who accept few things and reject others, they are hypocrites. So do we want to be an, a hypocrite? No, of course not. You would like to be a pure followers of Ali alayhi salam. You would like to be pure followers of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So then we have to follow their footsteps. Kindly recite Salawat Muhammad wa alayhi salam. وَأَنَّكُمْ دَعِمَ الدِّينَ وَأَمَرْتُمْ فَلَمْ تُطَعُوا you ask them, you ordered people to do this thing and do that thing. This is haram, this is halal. Now what, what we try to do, we try to find some, what you say, uh, uh, some scape way, way out. Okay, can we, can we have this thing? Can we have that thing? You know, we, we just, the thing is that we should try to understand that we want to reach the uh, highest level of excellence. The Holy Prophet was been sent to take people to the highest level of excellence. The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Innama utammima makare malakhlaq. Innama bu'ithu le utammima makare malakhlaq." That I have been sent to take people towards the highest level of makare malakhlaq. That is the moral values. And then we start pick and choose. If we leave few things, we won't be able to achieve that thing. Have you ever played jigsaw puzzle? I hope so. Everyone has played that. If not, I, su I suggest and advise that you play that thing, especially if the, the one which is ha having 500 pieces or 1000 pieces. You will like it. Well, even like taking the example of 500 pieces. So if even one piece is missing. That picture is incomplete. Islam is not. 
the few acts of offering prayers or having 30 days of siyam and fasting. No, it consists of huququllah and huquq al-ibad that the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rights of mankind. So we have to bring them, understand them, balance them, adjust them, where, when, how. Every piece cannot be put in the place of some other piece. Every piece will come on its own place. Now we have to find it out. It's not so easy. It takes time. It takes time, sir. It takes time to find out if that place. At, at times we need help of some other people. Some other people. So we get that guidance. So we can complete that picture of Islam within ourselves and can reach the height of excellence and perfection and purity inside out. Can you recite Salawat Muhammad? ये नारे हैदरी किसी बच्चे ने लगाया होता मैं 5 डॉलर दे देता अभी मैं 5 डॉलर ले लूंगा उनसे सलवाद मोहम्मद वाले बड़ों से इंसान को जो है लेना चाहिए दे नहीं सकता इंसान द थिंग इज दैट दिस दिस इज द ऑब्लिगेशन नो जस्ट वेरी ब्रीफली बिकॉज़ टुडे वी डोंट हैव मसाइब all fazail and these are fazails we we make that we have set our mind the fazails are the those on which we don't have to practice which is something exclusive to our imams my dear what it's all it's been said in ziyarat or in the hadith it's all exclusive you won't find anywhere these qualities a person with that quality with that il with that hilm with that all that knowledge and taqwa you won't find and this is the one of the miraculous character a person can find where we can find a pure and perfect people except in these masumin alayhim assalam hadith is a lengthy hadith but just i will uh, narrate uh, the uh, translation uh, over here. Now everybody knows that one of the prominent companion of imams and masumin were Hazrat Jabir. Now there have been two Jabirs. Remember that. One was the companion of the Holy Prophet, then Imam Ali, then Imam Hassan, then Imam Hussain. Then Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Imam Zainal Abidin, Imam Muhammad Bakr, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. So he met all these people. And this is, most probably, is the hadith narrated by the same Hazrat Jabir. Now what he says, he came to Imam alayhi salam. He came to Imam alayhi salam. Imam alayhi salam said, O Jabir, it is not enough that a person says, I am a Shia and I love the Prophet and the Prophet's family and the Imams. This is not sufficient and enough. By Allah, a Shia is the one who is perfectly pious and obedient to Allah's commands. This is Imam is saying. We say no. We have done few ritualistic things and that is sufficient for us? No. Again, it is a part of our faith and belief. But we have to complete it. And then Imam says, Anyone else is not a Shia, no matter how much they say they love Hazrat Ali and no matter what they call themselves. O Jabir. Our Shias are known by their signs. It's not what we claim. And it's not with only Nare Hedri. Because Nare Hedri and our political parties are also, you know, 
making these things, all these things. We cannot say. And the thing, you, we, we all know, the first Nara Hedri, who did, the, not in this, in this way, but the other way, who was the first person who said Nara Hedri? This was the, that, that, that privilege was being acquired by the second caliph. When, when it, it happened, when in the Ghadir, when uh, Rasulullah said, Man kunta mawla fahada aliyun mawla, he went first over there and said, Bakhin, Bakhin ya Ali. He was the first person to greet him. He was the first person when, when in the times of First Caliph, they need the assistance and help and advice of Ali. He asked, just call, send someone and call Ali over here. He, we will take his advice. So he was the first person who, t- who said the Ya Ali Madad. He was the first person. But just we will say because he said this thing, because he greeted him. Can we say, can we take the conclusion? I don't would like to take that conclusion. But... We don't able to say that. So what? It's not only what we say. It's the signs. It's we. If we are Shias, it should come out of us. It should show our character. Should speak loudly. What we say. Actions are uh, louder than. Then uh, Imam Ali says, "They are. They are just." Very uh, quickly, they are truthful. Who are our Shias? What are their signs? They are truthful, trustworthy, and loyal. They always remember. They all say, "Remember Allah, Zikrullah." They offer their prayers, observe fast, and recite Quran. They help their neighbors, take care of orphans, and say nothing but good. They act nicely towards their parents. They are worthy of people, trust and confidence. They have been around 12 qualities and signs. They are similar hadith from 5th and 6th Imam. More qualities has been mentioned. Now we we are commemorating the and celebrating the uh, birth of Imam Bakr. For what? Why? Why we are commemorating? Because we 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 believe that he is our Imam. He is our leader. He is our guide, and we seek knowledge from him. So this is the knowledge what he is giving, conveying us through his sayings, his character. What he did, how he strive and struggle to spread the lie of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people. It's been narrated that there were been thousands of students in the, in the class of Imam Muhammad Bakr and Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi wa sallam. So do you think they were all Shias? No, they were not Shias. They were not all those people who used to believe in the Imamat and leadership, divine leadership of the Imam, Imam, fifth Imam. No, they were different people. Even at times been narrated, they were being people who used to come from uh, uh, Rome and uh, uh, from Rome and from Persia. They used to come over there and seek knowledge from these Imams. So how? Can, can we see people over here? Now we are commemorating the Velada of Imam Muhammad Bakr. Can we see all sort of Muslims coming to our centers? No. Our doors are closed. Our doors are not closed. Our minds are closed. It's not, it's not that it's something is happening in Dallas and not, otherwise it's all open. No. I'm talking about the entire Shia world, we have closed the doors. 
we have closed the doors we we need to find a way to open it and bring those people to the knowledge which has been given by imams to guide them they need i at this time you can see people are desperate in this materialistic world they are finding way out for their prosperity of this world and hereafter they want to come out from their depression they want to come out from their gloomy days and the only thing which can bring bring them from the gloomy days from their blooming days it's only the wilaya and is the teaching of quran and ahlul bayt alayhi wassalam we have to we have to make ourselves as a center of center of love and affection for the people as our imams were as our imams were the people used to that's why imam says that you say hadith from imam uh, uh, imam six imam imam says that that o oh people o oh my shias your character should be something like that if people look towards you they say oh these are the people with this good character they are the followers of imam jafar sadiq they are the followers of ahlul bayt so we should be we should be the manar we should be the station we should be the tower of guidance and light what's going on in the entire muslim world or entire world we should be concerned about it we shouldn't be ignorant we should help them people around ourselves yes it's been hadith that a people in need a person in need has been asked to restrain himself and restrict himself abstain from spreading his head hands uh, in front of others but those who can help they have been asked to approach those people when we pay zakat we pay charity it's not on poor people to come to us to our doorsteps and ask for charity no it is our responsibility to go to their doorsteps and to help them out are we doing within something like that in this community to other places in the world the people are need they want education they need food they want health are we thinking about them or not the imams what he has taught that we should be concerned and we should able to assist other people who are in need maybe from our advice from finances some our skills anyway we can help we should do May Allah give us the give us guidance and enlighten our hearts and minds with the light of Imam Muhammad Baqir alayhi salam May Allah give us tawfiq to be a true and pure follower of our imams and follower and true and pure follower of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam May Allah accept our little deeds and forgive us for our huge uh, shortcomings and sins. May Allah, may Allah give us tawfiq to serve Islam and His creation. May Allah forgive the sins and shortcomings of our uh, people who have left us, especially uh, Feroz Bhai, who just passed away. May Allah grant him the best place in Jannah with Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam inshallah may Allah hasten the reappearance of our Imam ajjal Allah taala farj al sharif and give us tawfiq to be amongst the true and pure followers of him bismillahir rahmanir rahim allahumma kun li waliyyika al hujjat ibn al hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai 
في هذه الساعة وفي كل الساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه ورضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا صلوات الله